Welcome into Pirate Basketball Overtime right here on the Sports Objective. I am the, the it's the end of the world as we know it, and I feel fine. Uh, the great REM song back in the day, that's the way I felt. Pirates, a huge win. Uh, that's the understatement of the century, 82 to 73 over the number five team in the nation, those Houston Cougars. And with us right now, ladies and gentlemen, Kyle from LaGrange Barber, Nostradamus. How are you? <laughs> yeah. I wish I'd done it on the air with Sam Raz last night, but yeah, I did tell Bubba we were going to pull off the upset tonight and said it very matter of factly, and uh, we did it. And uh, now let's see if we can turn it into something. Hey, Bubba Rosenbaum, how are you, man? We got a we got a guy on here that predicted on our show uh, uh, last time we had him on. Do you remember that? Yeah, no doubt. And um, you know, Tony messaged me during the game, and or maybe it was right after the game. Uh, it's been such a blur tonight, and so, you know, such an awesome moment for pirate basketball that I honestly don't remember when Tony sent it to me on Facebook Messenger. But he said, "Hey, I called it," and he he definitely did that, as did Kyle last night. And uh, I'm certainly glad they did. And I told Kyle on the way home, it's one of those things I'll never forget. Never did I think that I would be. Uh, at a hockey game, watching East Carolina basketball on my phone, beat the number five ranked team in the country. But that's what happened tonight. And there with about five minutes or so left when we were up, you know, 10, 11 points. Uh, I would have loved to have known what my blood pressure was, first of all. And then I had to leave the uh, the hockey game or I chose to leave the hockey game. I said, these people are going to think I'm nuts because I'm going to start – hollering like Ric Flair and so, so I opted to go out to my car and um, I certainly uh, I certainly uh, sounded like Flair uh, several times in the last five minutes of the game and uh, yeah just what a great night to be Bob, a Bob, 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 let's hear your best woo go ahead we gotta, nah, nah. <laughs> you, you talk about sounding like Flair we gotta hear you go woo nah I, I'll uh, <laughs> I'll keep that between me me and the Acadia but uh <laughs> but, but, but what a night! And and I, I told I told Kyle this on the way home, guys. And I, I told my wife Stacy, and just I said people are going to see me looking at my phone and see a couple of tears stream down my face and wonder what in the heck's wrong with me. And and then uh, funny story, uh, Stacy and the kids were walking out. They knew I had left the game, but they didn't know where I went. And at that point, I was taking part in the press conference. So I didn't answer the phone and she said, where did you park? And this is embarrassing and ridiculous. They were walking around the parking lot trying to find the car. And I said, I said, guess what? I don't care <laughs> because I knew they were, I knew they were safe and I was too busy celebrating. <laughs> and who do we have on tonight, Bubba? Welcome back to the show. Um, pirate point guard from the mid nineties, Tony Parham. Tony, how are you? I'm doing great. Great day to be a pirate. Hey, Tony, uh, are you going to play the Mega Millions and Powerball tonight, my friend? As soon as they open up tomorrow morning. <laughs> as soon as they call, open up tomorrow morning. Pick three, pick five, it doesn't matter. We, we uh, Hey, you picked the Pirates. I, I got to give it to you. You and Kyle, I love it. I love it, man. I'm usually the guy that's uh, half, uh, the glass half full, and uh, I'm glad to be wrong. Totally glad to be wrong. I'll be, I'll be glad to be wrong every single basketball game if that's what it means to get a victory. Right. And, you know, I, I, I didn't have the opportunity to watch the game. I, you know, I, I told you guys earlier, I'm stuck in, stuck in traffic. So I've been following on, e, on the ESPN app. And, you know, with about five minutes left, I'm sitting there like waiting, like, can we hold on? Can we hold on? And, you know, as you know, on the app, you got to keep refreshing it because the time doesn't move. And when that clock hit zero, I, I was probably one of the happiest people in America. Well, I was going to ask you, Tony, uh, knowing that you were coming on, Bubba told me, uh, what does this do for you guys, the guys that were here uh, the first time around um, there for Dooley and got some time with Dooley and, you know, Coach Dooley. And then uh, knowing you, there's been so many great Pirate players um, through the years that uh, obviously I know this has got to be special for you guys. Right. Um, you know, being up here in, in, in the Maryland, Washington, D.C. area, it's, it's a lot of guys that play college basketball up here. Everybody knows what school you go to. So for, you know, a point in time, it, it, it kind of felt real bad to be a pirate. You couldn't brag about anything. But, you know, now that I can walk around. We had we got a victory of the number five team in the country. And I can put my university out there with any of them right now. Yeah, a little bragging rights. A little uh, – but people, people, 
people don't even, you know, until until football and baseball season, you know, sometimes people forget East Carolina has a basketball program. But when, when, you, when you beat the number five team in the country, it uh, it reminds people, particularly here in ACC country, you know, you, you talk about uh, Tony living up there in Maryland, which uh, I guess that used to be ACC country. I guess it's Big Ten country now. But down here in ACC country, you, you get sick to death of, of everybody talking about the, 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 the Tar Heels and the Blue Devils and, and Tobacco Road and ACC basketball. Well, uh, guess what? Tonight it's about the Pirates, and uh, we kind of have the stage in North Carolina. You know, I know Duke Carolina's this weekend, but until Saturday, it's all about the Pirates. Right, right. And, and you know, it, it feels real good right now. I mean, you know, I was talk, telling the guys earlier, I, I just hope that they can take this and build momentum from it. You know, they, they show if you can play with the number five team in the country, which everybody picked against you, except for me. I didn't pick against them. But everybody, you're a 17-point underdog, and you, and you take care of business at home. I mean, if you can play with this confidence against the number five team in the country, you can play with anybody in the country. You just got to believe. And, yeah. Tony, one of the things that uh, comes to mind that you talked about, so I'm going to give you credit for it, but you talked about, the ball movement. They moved the ball around. The Pirates did very well tonight. Uh, other thing that came to mind that was only seven turnovers. They took care of the ball tonight. The assist, the the turnovers were down. I mean, hey, when you do that, you're going to win a lot of the time, right? Yeah, you give yourself an opportunity. Um, 20 assists, um, 20 assists on 27 baskets. You shoot, I think you shoot 47% from the field and 44% from three. You're definitely gonna get a chance, give you a chance to win a whole lot of ball games if you do that. In the recent times, Bubba, I think the uh, Bubba's our stats guy. Uh, I think our three point percentage had dropped uh, down to twenty seven percent. We've had a really tough January. Uh, that that really uh, makes a big difference here. Forty four percent tonight. Yeah, it may have been that over the last few games for sure. I, I don't think it was that for the season because we were as high as thirty eight percent. I know it, I know it hadn't dropped that low, but uh, but yes, we shot the ball much better tonight. We were eleven out of twenty four from three, so just shy of fifty percent. And what about the defense, guys? Uh, Houston, they shot lights out in the first half, knocked down six out of eleven threes, fifty three point six percent from the floor. And then after halftime, twenty five point eight percent. Wow! Yeah, wow. They and they had a stretch there, Tony. Where guys, did you see that in the second half? The middle it was probably about ten minutes to go. I just noticed there was a there was they were playing real tight and they were coming down and and they were like rushing things and uh, like they were panicking. I don't know, but it seemed like to me that that was that was when I noticed, uh, hey, the Pirates may have a, a chance tonight because I didn't expect them. They look like they lost their composure. Well, one thing I can I, I can I can tell you, and just from playing basketball and and and, and watching and doing a little coaching, that when you, you're the favorite and you're expected to win, and then things are not going your way and times running down on that clock, you tend to do things that you normally wouldn't do. Makes you play a little quicker, take shots that you normally wouldn't take. And it, it, if things are not rolling in your way and you can't catch momentum, it, 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 it's hard to overcome. Start pressing. Yeah, I, uh, I'll tell you one one interesting thought I had. You know, you beat the number five team in the country. You know they're going to be the one seed in the tournament. You know, it's a long long time between now and March when you get to the conference tournament. But you you got to think if we can build some momentum off of this and, and win a few more here in February, that when it comes time for conference tournament, we'll have some confidence knowing that we can beat the best team in the league. That uh, if 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 we can advance in the tournament, we can win the whole thing. It, it definitely gives you a whole lot of confidence. And, and one thing with that is, you just got to remain focused, stay on task, do the things that you did to 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 get this victory. I mean, you're gonna have some tough nights, but one thing I, I always say that um, regardless of how your offense is doing, defense travels. Yeah. So if you can. Yeah, all you need to do is score one more point than the other team. So on, on those nights when your jump shots not falling, you're missing free throws, just lock in defensively and things will take care of itself on the offense end. No doubt about it. In just a little bit, we'll have the comments, post game comments from Jaden Gardner, Tristan Newton, and Coach Joe Dooley. So stay tuned for that. Right now, talking to former uh, point guard for the Pirates in the 90s, Tony Parham. Tony. Uh, man, this is just uh, unbelievable. It's like the shot heard around the world. 
uh, I could use all the famous uh, sports cliches, but uh, this is, uh, I, I, you don't know how to react when you're not used to this. Right. I mean, I, 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 I saw on the, on the ESPN app that, you know, this was East Carolina's first uh, win against a top five opponent and, and third win against a, a ranked opponent. So, I mean, it's, it's uncharted territory for us. But one one thing that, that, that bothers me, I mean, it doesn't really bother me that, you know, because of the COVID situation, the students were not there to enjoy this. I'm I'm pretty sure yes. it would have been a court storming affair at Menji's tonight. Oh yeah, we, <laughs> Bubba and I talked about that. You know, yeah, it it, it 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 was great to get the win, but you're right, it, it would have been you know all the fans on the court, the students on the court. It would have been a wild time at Menji's. You know, I, I've seen a couple of court stormings. Uh, the biggest one that comes to mind is when we beat NC State in Menji's in a in um uh 07 and um but i would imagine this one would have been uh maybe even better than that one in but unfortunately um because of covid uh, there was nobody there to storm the court i think i think there was maybe 60 people there 60 something and they mm-hmm. tried to make some noise uh at the end of the game <laughs> what little bit they could but uh it, w- it would have been great to to have a full house and and to uh, seeing Bubba Rosenbaum running onto the court. All right. Absolutely. Uh, I promise you I'd have been there and with, with Gary Overton trying to tackle me. <laughs> <laughs> Coach O is going to bring take but, you down, man. I put my money on Coach O any day of the week with his black but, uh, pants. Right, Bubba? Hey, uh, Tony, we got a shout-out for you from uh, Brian Pays, better known as B. Pays. Um, he, he said, tell Tony Parham to let me borrow some of those D.C. socks. And I, and I told him, <laughs> I told him, I, I said, I already let Tony know that back in the day, uh, my YMCA games when I was in middle school, I wore the stirrup sock because of you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Pays, how you doing? I mean, I don't. Honestly, truly, I don't even know what made me wear those socks. I, I I started in high school. You know, I played at Archbishop Carroll in DC. We were green and gold, and I just happened to be walking in Models one day and saw some green socks with a stripe. And I said, you know what? I'm going to wear these. And and I I wore them for my senior year, transferred down to East Carolina and and, and wore them for a little bit until you know a, a, a little bug got put in my ear, like you know you don't want to be a uh, individual on a team. So. I, I had to stop wearing the socks. <laughs> <laughs> that became my, that was like your trademark, right? Yeah, that was my trademark. High socks and the high baseball stirrup socks. It, fe- it, felt, it felt a little funny at first adjusting to just all plain white socks. But, I mean, you know, like like the bug in my ear, I didn't want to be an individual on, on a team sport. <laughs> no doubt. Tony, and, uh, did, uh, did, did, did any of your any of your teammates and all were you were you guys texting after the game? Your former teammates uh, about the win? Did you did you send Coach Dooley a text? That's the first thing I did. I, I first thing I did. Uh, it, it was probably like forty something seconds left, and I sent Coach a text. I said, "Great win. Just keep up the momentum." Awesome. And you know, one you know one thing one thing about Coach, and and, and I, I'm a true believer in him. I, I I believe in everything he's doing. If 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 the Pirate fans are, are patient with him and let him do the things that he needs to do to get this program where it needs to go, I think at the end they'll be pretty pleased at the outcome. Yeah, and, and I think it will be. I mean, this is year three, um, year four next year. Everybody, I think, is going to get a kind of, and it goes for coaches too. In most cases, because of COVID, I think everybody's going to be kind of given an extra year of, of uh, people being patient. So, uh, of course, the win tonight goes a long way long for anybody way. that was losing patience. Uh, that, that this one will tide you over for a while. <laughs> right, right. And literally, Tony, as far as the program goes, what do we have to lose? I mean, we have a guy like Joe Dooley that you know is a winner. Then, you know, we've seen bright spots. Um, I mean, he was, we were competitive in games. We probably shouldn't have been two years ago, but it was because of, not because of talent. It was because of the system that he has and the toughness, the mental toughness he puts in these kids. It's just tremendous. I mean, that he had them believing they could win, you know, two years ago when we didn't have the talent that we have now. Right. And, you know, one thing I can speak on about that, I mean, you know, you go through some rough practices, and but, Coach Dooley puts you through grueling practices because his practices are intentionally made to be harder than the games. 
So when you get into the games, it's nothing that you're going to see or nothing that you didn't go through in practice that didn't prepare you for this game. I mean, I can remember a couple of drills where we had to get uh, two consecutive stops. And, and the coaches intentionally called ticky-tack fouls on the defense. So you can score one time and, and get a foul call the next time, and now you got to start all over to get two consecutive stops in order for you to switch it over. I mean, it, it was times I was playing defense for like five minutes straight. But it, it, it teaches you in a moment, but like when you're in a game, overcome all obstacles and do whatever it, you need to do to get a stop on defense. Yeah, we really. How about there at the end, guys? What it may have been in excess of two minutes left when um, Houston really started to extend the ball game. Yes, or, making our know, free throws. Yeah, fouling with uh, with that much time left, um, playing hack a shack, so to speak. And uh, for the most part, we knocked them down. We did miss a couple of front ends on one and ones, and and right after that, I. But we're starting to get a little nervous. I was like, well, they missing two front ends of one-and-ones. But uh, Tremont or somebody had uh, a big bucket after that, and we, we did our uh, job to, to keep Houston at arm's length. Well, I mean, free throws wins games. I mean, you know, well, you, you look back on it. If, if, you can, if you can shoot at least 70% – well, here's my keys to victory. If you can shoot – at least 70% from the free throw line, keep your turnovers under 12, and try to hold your opponent to like 40% shooting, you, you stand an excellent chance of winning the basketball game. Yeah. yeah. B, uh, B. Page brought up a good point uh, that he's put on Facebook that uh, those fouls that J.J. Miles has, and I was explaining to my son who loves basketball, he was going nuts. <laughs> uh, being a big Pirate fan, uh, Alexander, I was explaining to him that the very fact that we – we're stopping the clock. There's no reason to foul them. Let them have the basket because the enemy is the clock. And so we're stopping the clock with the foul. Then they get the two free throws potentially. And then as soon as we get the ball, they're going to foul us again. And they're going to stop the clock. That clock, it took forever to get it all the way down to triple zeros. Well, let me tell you, as, as a player being in that position, um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure JJ probably thought about this. Tomorrow in film session, if I let this guy go right past me to the basket, that clip is going to be on the highlight tape, and we're going to talk about defense. So he probably was, you know, trying to play defense. Yeah. And it, it just got caught up and in, 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 in probably bumped the guy or was a little too aggressive. But I, I've been in that position before. We've been up, and we had guys running at us to try to score a basket. And you know you don't want to foul, but you know you also don't want to be on that clip tomorrow in, in, in the film session. All right. Uh, it was it was uh, for, for me, guys. You know, y'all talked about where y'all were. Uh, for me, I was. Uh, uh, you know, I, I had forgot what time the game was. It, it screws me up with these early tip offs, and uh, I I forgot what time the game was. And I see the score at halftime, or down by three. And I said, "All right, you know, we were out. Um, we were in Goldsboro picking something up for dinner." And uh, I said, uh, "I said, well, you know, I'm gonna keep up with the game." And then the last, you know, five, ten minutes of the game, if, if we're, we're, we're within five or so, I'm going to turn it on. And so, uh, yeah, we were up by, you know, eight, nine, whatever it was. So I said, well, yeah, I better turn it on. And, uh, I, I, you know, you, you have that little thing in the back of your brain that goes, wait a minute, what if I turn it on and I jinx us? Jinx but, uh, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. I decided that I didn't control the universe. And, uh, I turned the game on and, uh, and, and watch just uh, pull off the biggest victory, uh, you know, arguably in East Carolina history, and certainly on paper it is. Yeah, there's no question. I mean, I, I don't know what other big game would you, you know, put uh, other than um, a pride victory against the, the NC State one. Mark, no, no, the, yeah, the NC State was a big win, but that NC State win, other than the fact that it was over NC State, not right? Bad. It fails in comparison to to back to back wins over number nine Dwayne Wade and Marquette. Yeah, Marquette would have been would have been the other one. Um, and, and just and, and just what it meant, you know. I, it, you know, you you could make an argument that the biggest win in East Carolina history was the win over um, Weber State in the uh, in the in, in the uh, CIT tournament because it was for a tournament championship, or, or maybe the win over. Um, Oh guys, who who did we beat? Uh, was it Mason we beat to 
back in the CAA tournament to go to the NCAAs? It was James Madison. Madison, okay. You, you can make an argument that the win over James Madison was the biggest win in program history. It just depends on how you want to look at it. But in terms of a ranked opponent, yeah, beating – this is the first ever win over a top five team. That's that's pretty damn big. Yeah, this is really, really about big, it. real big. I mean, you can't – yeah, this, this is the biggest. This is definitely the biggest. And uh, certainly it makes it sweeter that it was at home in Greenville. Um, and certainly uh, we hate that the fans can't be there. Um, I would love to see Gary Rosenbaum with the jungle, <laughs> the jungle calls. <laughs> uh, his cheering, I love it. Um, and uh, a lot of the, I mean, the fans. That's the thing is that hopefully we can get this COVID situation straightened out and where we can get people back. It's going to be obviously. Uh, I would think it's going to be at least January. It probably it's going to be into basketball season before we can have. Um, a decent amount of fans, unfortunately. But um, I, I think we'll I think we'll have some for my football season. No, I'm talking about I'm saying I'm saying that um in other words our basketball season will have oh, some yeah. no it's not gonna be this year. No, it's not right. it's not gonna be this year for basketball. I thought you just meant in general for athletics. But no, it goes without saying. Uh I, I don't know, uh Dave, by next November I think uh Hopefully, I think yeah. by the start of the next basketball season we'll be able to have fans. I hope so. That's, uh, you know, that's that's what the plan is. And uh, read today, 2%. Well, now I'll say this real quick and move on with not to be a COVID show because we're celebrating. But 2% of America has had their vaccine so far. So we've got 78% to go. Uh, it's, not we'll being offered to, it's not being offered to very many people, Dave. I mean, if you're under the age of 65 and don't work in the medical field, you can't get it. Yeah. yeah well, yeah, 65 it, 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 is... They're doing it in stages now because I'm in the process of, of waiting to get my uh, vaccination because now they moved it to the uh, educational field. Yeah. Well, right. see, that's in Maryland. Uh, so, if, uh, to my knowledge, yeah, Bubba, maybe you know different just guys have said. Uh, can, can you guys get it now, Bubba? They're moved, that's the next tier. So, um, yes. Okay, the, so, yeah, so we ain't there yet. That's so the, the um, essential workers is what it's called next. Okay. It'll be 55. Okay. It'll be it'll be 55 plus essential workers, being teachers, um, firefighters, uh, police officers, EMS, the first responders. So that's um, that's what's coming, and and that's what we the problem we face is the supply um, because the 65 and older crowd in North Carolina, 83 percent of um, the deaths of COVID is from that age group. Is 65 plus is what's killing. Um, yeah. So, that, the, thankfully, the 65 plus crowd is wanting the vaccine, and that's why it's taking so long. Is because a lot of them are, want want it, and then we're having trouble getting it from the allocations from the, the federal government. So, anyway, okay, well, we got any more comments from the uh, from the uh, from the viewers? Uh, do, do, has Brennan chimed in? He did. He did. Brennan uh, ch chimed in way back. I can have to scroll right towards the, the beginning. Um, and he said, "This is the best thing that's ever happened to ECU basketball." Arr. <laughs> there you go. There, there you go. go. Thank you, you Brennan Shapiro. Loves fire basketball, and I was a big fan of the podcast, so wanted to to get him in there. And it's helped us out at times, also. Not not just fan. He's he's also yeah. been a part of the show. No doubt. And uh, we appreciate him. And, uh, you know, guys, Tony, I was thinking, I, I'll tell you another thing I was thinking about, guys. It, they showed Jody Jones working really hard, um, the SID for basketball. I thought about him. I thought about Cy Seymour. I thought about Jeff Charles. Uh, a lot of the men and women. Oh, has anybody got a chance to hear Jeff? The scenes for basketball. A lot of great fans that are. Uh, you know what he said, don't you, Kyle? What a win, Jeffrey. Did, did he say it, really? No, I'm. I, he may have. I have. I have not heard the call, but yeah. I just, hope he just, did. Just, I just, hope just, he did. The Weber State. Uh, what a shot, Jeffrey! Yeah, what a shot, Jeffrey! <laughs> I, I hope love he that. Duplicated that tonight. <laughs> what, what a win, Jeffrey! <laughs> Don't stop anymore. He's great. Oh Dave, my God. Uh, very quickly before we go to the post game audio, um, we'll take a look at the stats, uh, starting with the the team numbers. Uh, like I mentioned, the Pirate defensive performance um, in the second half was huge. And um, 
East Carolina coming out victorious over fifth-ranked Houston. Um, the Cougars finished the game 39% after shooting just 25% in the second half, um, 28% less than they did um, before halftime. Uh, East Carolina finished the game at 47.4%, 27 out of 57. Um, from three-point range, the Pirates were 11 out of 24, 45.8%. Houston, uh, after knocking down – Six threes in the first half, six out of 11. They were just three out of 18 in the second half as they were, like we mentioned, fouling and jacking up a lot of threes and uh, coming up empty. And uh, from the free throw line, Pirates got there more frequently than they had in recent games. A lot of that was due to uh, Houston fouling so much at the end. I'd like to know how many of those 24 attempts came in the last two minutes, probably at least about 15 of them. But uh, the Pirates finished 17 out of 24 from the charity stripe, 70.8%. Houston was 18 out of 23, 78.3%. The Pirates held their own on the glass. Uh, Luigi Debo did an excellent job. Had I don't, I'm not sure how many boards he finished with, but uh, he was competing in there and uh, had some tap outs. Uh, Jaden Gardner had 15 of those 36 rebounds for the Pirates as they uh, were out rebounded by the fifth ranked um, Cougars, who are also the, the number five rebounding team in the nation um, by just a single board, 37 to 36. Um, East Carolina had 20 assists on 27 made field goals, which is awesome. And uh, that goes right with where the Pirates have been for the majority of the season um, in the Ken Palm. Um, I think it's offensive efficiency rankings. East Carolina is in the top five or 10 in the country. I, I believe I heard Coach Dooley say, and then um, Jay Sonhalter and, and uh, Chris Edwards referenced that on tonight's broadcast. And uh, Houston had 13 assists. There you see the Pirates, like Dave mentioned earlier on, with only seven turnovers. On the individual numbers, and the Pirates had five guys in double figures, laid by led by Jaden Gardner's, um, I think it's maybe his fourth double-double in the last five games, 21 points and 15 rebounds. Um, Tremont Robinson-White continued to play well, his fifth straight game with 15-plus points, 17 Tonight for Trey Mott, five out of six from three-point range. J.J. Miles had 14. Um, Batumba Broody, uh, after struggling the last few games, stepped up and uh, played uh, more like he had the majority of the season. Um, Batumba had 13, knocked down some big threes. And Tristan Newton uh, had 10, but he also uh, contributed in other ways with with assists and, uh, and rebounds tonight. And uh, leading the way for Houston, um, was Giroux with 25, Sasser had 17, and Gorham had 11 points and 11 rebounds. But I think nine out of those 11 points, if not all 11, came in the first half. And uh, there there you have the statistics, and we'll have the audio for you here just shortly. All right, Tony, uh, I know you've got to go. Appreciate you, buddy, very much for coming on the show. And, no uh, problem. And i uh, love to have you back, man. Appreciate you so much. And uh, nope. go Pirates. No what problem. a big win. No problem. Anytime. Hopefully, I can come back on Saturday. I went over Memphis. Hey, well, hey, we'll have you on, man. <laughs> All right. No doubt. Have a good one. All right, Tony Parham. Uh, thanks for him chiming in, coming in uh, short notice. But man, what a what a victory! Oh my goodness, that is. It's still. I'm still in shock. I think it's been a couple hours now. Uh, what has it been? Two hours now since the game has been over and. Uh, something like that was it three hours, I guess, something like that. And uh, hard to believe, man. Hey, time flies when you're having fun, right, Dave? Yeah, I, I still, I still am finding it hard to believe, but it's a, it's a great feeling. And um, that now we got, we've got to turn it around Saturday on the road at Memphis. Um, this is what's, uh, this is what you want, right, Kyle? We were talking about that. You want to have uh, Memphis where you can give them a little payback uh, there and uh, and. In Memphis. Yeah, well, you know, you they blew us out, so you need some confidence. And um, now would be the time to play them. You obviously have as much confidence as you – you should have as much confidence as you've had all year. So uh, now would be the time. You know, you, I, I, you, you almost would rather have an easy – if there is such thing as an easy win in this league after uh, after Houston. But, you, 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 like I said, you, you should have more confidence now to play Memphis than you than you would have at any other time. And who knows? Uh, stranger things have happened. Um, we maybe we go on the road and beat Memphis right after we beat the number five team in the nation and really get people uh, talking. 
yeah, this the, we've got the guys, and that's the thing. We we've seen that we have the talent to hang uh, with anyone in the conference. The problem we've had is, uh, like you talked about, Kyle, uh, it's Christmas time when everything uh, went with COVID, and then we it, the, everything has been so crazy. Not having the guys, not having Dooley for was a couple weeks, whatever it was, it's a long time. I mean, they couldn't have practice. They I mean, it's just been a, an absolute nightmare for them. And the fact that those guys were able to stick together, the coaches were able to keep them together, uh, just that alone is a victory. But now you're starting to see the guys. You remember when Gard, Jaden Gardner had a concussion protocol? We have a uh, COVID protocol. I mean, it's just been one thing after the other. Yeah, and that's something else we haven't even mentioned about tonight unless you just did. And uh, I was – and getting the audio queued up and ready to roll. Um, but I don't think you mentioned this, but uh, Brandon Suggs um, being out tonight with yeah. an ankle, ankle injury. And then you had Tyree Pig Jackson, who knocked down a big three off the left wing early in the game. But then he had to go to the locker room and um, he, he was on the bench in a boot um, in the second half. And then you obviously also have Charles Coleman, who's out with the leg injury. So, Yes, Charles Coleman doesn't contribute a lot in terms of points, but um, he can contribute in other ways. And when you're playing a team as deep as Houston, um, not having um, those three guys, um, you know, r really uh, could have hurt you. But who, who knows? It's weird sometimes. Maybe if they were there, you know, somebody has to get the minutes. And maybe some of those guys that scored in double figures yeah. wouldn't have been getting as many minutes and wouldn't have had the production they had. So kudos to everyone that I mentioned earlier, five guys in double figures stepping up. No question. Uh, I'm just, uh, again, uh, a lot of fun, a lot of excitement, certainly with, um, with guys that uh, it looks like they're, the last couple of games, the notice guys, and then we can go to the audio whenever you're ready, Bubba. But it just felt like that they were so close. That's what was frustrating. Not at the players, but for the players. They were so, so close. And I guess they saved it for the best because they saved it for uh, Houston to definitely go over the top. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, I mean, that's one of the things you'll hear Jaden talk about in his post-game remarks that you'll hear momentarily, and just how we had, you know, been close and hadn't found a way to put together the quality possessions, get the stops, etc., against Tulsa, against UCF when we had the opportunity to do so. Tonight we did that, and uh, I know it had to be awfully satisfying for our guys. No doubt. Uh, very, very excited for them. And uh, this is something that's going to be interesting to see uh, how they build the momentum. How do they how do they react? We're going to find out on Saturday afternoon about four o'clock. We'll be able to give you that answer. Uh, they can't play like they did last time. Uh, and we were short. And another thing, speaking of being shorthanded, we were really shorthanded in that game. If my memory serves me right, was that the Memphis game that we were down? You got yeah. a handful of guys, four or five guys, four guys, I think, four scholarship players. Yeah. Uh, First game back off of uh, the COVID break, and uh, it, it definitely showed. Um, that was a game I think we were only we we're a seven-point dog, and uh, I, I would not have hesitated to ha take Memphis to cover that um, with, with everything that was um, not working in the Pirates' favor. But um, we, we've steadily – improved uh, since then and played more competitive basketball, looked more sharp against Tulsa than we had since then and um, to put it all together tonight. No question. Uh, uh, what a great effort by the Pirates. Uh, give a shout out to the whole coaching staff and uh, we'll uh, we'll talk more about that, but uh, we want to do the post-game press conference and Bubba, I know the first one's up, Jaden, right? Yep, um, the first one's up is Jaden Gardner. Then after Jaden, you'll hear from uh, Tristan Newton. And then, of course, head coach Joe Dooley. But uh, first is Jaden Gardner with his 21 points and 15 rebounds. Celebration on the court when you grab the rebound seemed kind of chill and, and relaxed. Was the uh, was the, the locker room the same way or no? Oh, no, no. I'm out of breath. Uh, we just got it in. We just got it in real quick. Um, it's amazing, man. It's amazing, man. We've been through so so much adversity, man. Uh, we played three, four games in January. We was out for like 17 days, 20 days. 
it was tough, man. And we just had to get back in our rhythm. I and mean, we've gotten better with each game we play. UCF uh, came back, and then um, Tulsa, we was right in there. And in Houston, everything clicked tonight. And it was great to see everybody step up. And it was – that's a team win. That's a great team win and big for our program. I think your ball club has gotten their share of open shots over the course of this season. When you make shots, you can do some damage. And tonight, that's what you guys did. Yeah, it's amazing. Everybody was ready um, early. Um, just I saw saw them just helping off them, and I just said, "Keep shooting!" Like they're just leaving you open. So, and then uh, JJ got some, Trey got some. It's just amazing when the ball goes in the basket. It makes everyone's life easier. Oh. Didn't. Defensively tonight, you guys are very active, especially around the basket. So just how, how big of a boost was that for you guys playing so strong defensively? I mean, credit to the coaching staff, getting us ready, prepared, prepped, um, banging on the boards, um, we just physical. We know we had to be physical tonight, and we were trying to be very physical early, and I'm pretty sure they felt us. And um, we, we responded tonight, and that was, that was, that was the uh, big-time big time adjustment. Hey, Jaden, uh, just seven turnovers tonight. That's incredible against a team that plays defense like Houston. Just talk about that. You took care of the ball. Read yeah. out, made free throws down the stretch. Yeah, Coach always talks about um, the – to stay in the game. And we did that tonight. We got a lot of possessions. We got a lot of shots up and, and breeded off our defense. We made them turn the ball over a lot and – we got rebounds, and it was, it was we made it tough for them tonight. ECU had never defeated a top five team in school history. Um, hadn't done it. I mean, it, a lot of people would have said this isn't possible. I mean, what would you say to that? You know, people just kind of on looking and maybe not believing this could happen. I mean, it's just like it's just like football. It's any given Sunday. Whoever goes out there to, and preps and works and put the put the work in is going to win on that on that day. And we came in very prepared, prepped, ready to go, and we were able to get the W. And that's just how the ball flows, uh, the ball rolls sometimes. Hey, Jaden, JB here from Spectrum News One, man. Good to see you again, and uh, congratulations on the win. Speaking of this win, is this one of those victories that you're going to tell your grandkids about, man? Is this one that you'll never, ever forget? Yeah, that's the best one ever. Um, just letting that sink in that you just be the top five team in the country. And that's, that's very surreal. That's stuff you dream about, beating anybody ranks, really. And for it to be top five, yeah, this, this is the best right here. This is the best. Jaden Tremont and Tristan did a fabulous job of just controlling the basketball tonight and putting you guys in a position to to, to score points. They scored their share of them as well. Talk about uh, how, how it looked to you, uh, what they were doing out there a little bit. Uh, they're, they're really great guards. They're very poised, under control, and they know when and where to pick and choose their spots. And – they're very poised and they're very mature for their age because they're very young. Um, but they, I love playing with them. Um, they're ready to make big time shots and, and make big time plays on both ends of the floor. So it's, it's, it's always a pleasure playing with them. Have you thought at all it, tonight? I know it's been crazy, but what it would have been like if fans would have been here, they would have rushed the court. I know you're an emotional guy, the student section. I mean, I know this is awesome, but like what it could have been to some extent. The fans was here. Yeah. That would just that would just make the experience all the more better. And it's very unfortunate that COVID and all these things had to happen on our biggest winning program this year. But it's something that we just have to learn and cope with. What does this do for the mindset of this ball club and this program moving forward with to your belief system and this ball club's belief system now that you've proven that you can hang with one of the best? Well, you just beat the number one team in the conference. So then your mindset is if you can beat the number one team in the conference, you should be able to beat everybody in the conference. But you also have to still have that same mindset and prep that you're playing the best. So you can't just, if we go play, uh, you know, like UCF again, we can't have like other oh, UCF and not Houston. You have to have the same mindset and prepare. And it, it comes with us gelling together and getting back to practice and getting our rhythm back. That's all it, that's all it takes. Jaden, as far as the game is concerned in the second half, it felt like you guys were very loose. You were having a lot of fun. It seemed like uh, with Houston that they were feeling a lot of pressure as the clock was ticking down. How, how do you feel about that? Uh, I, I feel like they were just running out of time, and they knew it. Uh, we just had to keep the lead. Um, 
they had, they made a big run after my turnover. Um, they cut it to cut it to two, and but then we asserted ourselves back and got the lead back. And once we got the lead, we we was very comfortable because we we were trading twos. We're we're fine with trading twos. We don't want to be in a trading three situation. So we was able to maintain that ten point lead. That was fine. Mr. Newton. Tristan, big ball game for you tonight. Uh, ball game for you guys, and you pick up the biggest victory in the school history. Um, talk about what you were seeing out there. You did a good job of controlling the basketball and scoring and leading this ball club at the point for much of the evening. Well, uh, we were moving the ball a lot, and then our job out there at the point is to control the game, see everything. So I see my shooters, Trey was hitting, Jay was hitting, everybody was hitting. So I get to the lane, they're going to crash, and I find it out, they're going to hit it. There's a couple of times just in the second half, uh, you and Tremont, I think after making some of those threes, just kind of smiled. And, and uh, it, was it hard to just kind of hold back what y'all were doing as far as just, just making those threes? I mean, what was the emotions like during some of those shots? Um, yeah, it's kind of hard holding back. You have to, you have to be serious, but Coach always tells us to have fun out there. So when he hits a shot, I'm happy for him. When I hit a shot, he's happy for me. So that's what he's smiling about. Tristan, what, what does this kind of win do for you guys after a rough stretch, stretch coming out of the COVID pause? Just what does it do for you moving forward? Uh, it gives us a whole bunch of confidence. Uh, we can be anybody in the conference. And uh, top five team in the nation, that's a great win. So it shows us that we could compete and be anybody in the conference. Can you talk about kind of your mental, maybe a little bit of a slump and uh, dealt with some absences, but how did you get ready tonight to perform like you did? Well, I do the same routine I do every game, come in uh, a little bit early, get some shots up. But coach and teammates tell me to keep being aggressive. So I think I was a little more aggressive tonight and it helped me a lot. I'm aggressive. They help out. I can give it to my teammates. And if they don't help, I can get to, to rim, get a mirror range. Justin, you guys have been so close in the month of January. Uh, I know it's got to be special to have the monkey off your back, so to speak. Right. It was really the past couple of games, it's been our first half, to be honest. Like, second half has been great. So, we knew that we weren't down big because UCF was 20, Memphis was 30. So, we just had to be great. I mean, like, be close there in the second in the first half so we can put on the second half finish off the game. How big is it going to be for you guys now to begin to follow this thing up and, and try to find ways to to extend this thing a little bit and, and change the mindset of this conference on you know when they play East Carolina it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. It's gonna be real big. So it gives us a lot of confidence. The confidence like with a confidence you hit shots that you know you can hit you you're just a lot more confident do everything that you used to doing. So it's going to be real big, and we just got to keep stringing them together. Was there a point, maybe you mentioned the first half, but there a point where y'all kind of believed it could happen, you know, and started really thinking and looking at the school board, that type of thing? Oh, well, I mean, we came into the game believing that we are going to win. We do that every game, but it was like um, when we was up 10, we were up 10, I think it was 67, 57, and then they started fouling. We were like, we got this, just – Keep knocking down free throws, keep guarding, and get rebounds. And we'll come out with the victory. Obviously, obviously good win, you know, for the program. But the guys uh, played to win, which is most important. Not just played hard. I thought we competed and tried to win the game. I thought we had a lot of guys step up. Obviously, Jaden and, uh, you know, I thought Tristan played well. I thought it was a real good team effort, especially some guys down. So, uh, real good win for our guys. Sure has to be nice when guys are hitting shots like they should. And you've been getting wide open shots for, for quite a while now. And a few guys will be on, a few guys will be off. You got the whole effort tonight. Uh, what's it feel like? Oh, well, we shot the ball well, which makes up for a multitude of sins. I mean, that's that's one of the biggest things. And, um, you know, I, I thought in stretches our defense was pretty good, but I thought our offense, I thought the, more so because we didn't turn it over. We were one for six in the first half on bad shots, and I haven't seen a second half stats play. Can't imagine we took more than three or four bad shots, which are the same as turnovers. So it was good that the guys were, you know, made, made good decisions with the ball and were not necessarily, uh, you know, we weren't reckless. I, I did think the ball moved pretty well. And like you said, when we have 20 assists on 27 field goals, that's a good offensive ratio.
Joe, you were probably at Kansas going back on the wrong side of these kind of upsets and these these kind of nights, you know, getting knocked off when you're ranked so high. What was it, what was it like for you personally to, to kind of pull an upset that's going to register, obviously, on Sports Center and have a kind of national uh, appeal and uh, impact? That's, thanks for bringing up those, those bad losses. I appreciate that. But, I mean, I have been on that other side. And it's, it's, you know, it's, I think it's one of those deals, you know, that you – you know, you always, as a coach, you guys, you know, everybody thinks it's a cliche that you're worried about. I think you're always worried about all the games. And, you know, if you're used to trying to play for a, you know, a high seed, I mean, I know Coach Samson was on those guys because he is, because he's a great coach. And, uh, but, you know, I, I do, I've, I've seen the other side of it. It's, it's uh, one of those things where I know that they're a really good team. They'll go back and they'll regroup and they'll be, uh, they'll be ready to play the next time. Well, Coach Sampson appeared to be very emphatic in congratulating you after the game. Can you share any of his comments? He was just very gracious as usual. I mean, I have a lot of respect for Coach. I mean, I've known him for a long time. Uh, he said a few things to me about, you know, things we've talked about. He's been through the building process and uh, just very gracious, and, and uh, I appreciate his friendship. Coach, I missed the first couple of uh, questions, so forgive me if you've already answered this question, but – this was your 200th career win, um, and with it being against such a uh, formidable opponent and the best win, arguably, in school history, does that mean anything to you, or maybe it's something that will mean a little bit more down the line? You know, I, I, I think it's good for the guys because they've stuck with it. I mean, it's been a, it's been a rough month. You know, we've got guys in and out, guys in and out of, you know, injuries, pro, you know, COVID protocol, you know, it's been a disjointed month for our whole team. So just for them to stick in, I thought we did some good things against Tulsa. I thought we played better. I thought we did some good things today. Obviously, we did, you know, it's a great win for the program. And, and hopefully it's something that, you know, we can build on because they'll see that, you know, you, you, you got to win every day in practice. You can't, you know, it can't be one day on, one day off. And uh, I also like to see the guys get rewarded because that's something they've never really experienced since they've been here. And coach, another follow up to that. Um, sports and in general, you know, in football, there's the 12th man in basketball, you know, that sixth man is usually, uh, the crowd being able to, to win this game without that atmosphere and that energy and that extra push. Does that say a little bit extra about this team? I, I think this, not just for our team and, and, and going on the road also, I, I've got to give all these kids a lot of credit, whether it's Houston or East Carolina or, or all these other for them playing with no fans, these guys have been lined up playing really hard everywhere. And we went to, you know, we've gone on the road and played at SMU. Those guys played really hard. No, I think I think these kids just want to play. I think it's it, it is weird. I, I think they're starting to get used to it. But um, I think it's it would have been nice for our fans to be able to share that. Now I do say it would have been an awesome op, you know opportunity for our fans to see used to play and watch us you know win that game. But. Uh, I got to give the credit to kids all you know throughout the country the credit for for lining up and doing this this year. Coach um, Brandon Suggs wasn't dressed out today, and Tyree Jackson went down with an injury. Can you just provide an update on them? Uh, we'll get a medical update on on both of those guys. Uh, Brandon was has been banged up a little bit, got hurt against Tulsa, so hopefully we'll get some news on him tomorrow. And uh, I'm going to go down and I got a preliminary um, update on Tyree, and we'll, we'll find out where that goes probably a little bit later tonight. A bit of a two-part question uh, for you. Where does this win rank for you, and what does it do for the mindset of, of this team moving forward? Um, I mean, for the mindset, I think the biggest thing is learning, you know, is us on a consistent basis learning how to compete every day and seeing things that, you know, the little things do matter. Uh, believing is a, is a, you know, believe that you can win the game. Now they've seen that they can win a game. Hope that will give us some confidence going forward. Uh, it's a great win. I mean, I you know I enjoy them all. I mean, this was a, this was a really good win for our program, um, and hopefully, that's something we can build on. Kristen said it when y'all went up by ten in the second half, sixty-seven to fifty-seven. is when the players could kind of feel it was you know getting close and getting real. I mean, how proud are you for them closing it out at that point and, and, and you know finishing it off? Well, we got some stops, and then you know I think the other thing was with the exception of when we made our free throws. I, you know, we, we had a couple, we, we didn't, you know, trick too many, we tricked two or three of them off, but we didn't trick a bunch of them in a row off, which, you know, and then we were fortunate that, you know, we, we gave up a couple of easy quick buckets around the, you know, from about the minute 45 mark, you know, to about the minute mark, we gave up too many direct line drives downhill, which, 
you know, it's hard to guard when someone's putting their head down driving and you're telling them not don't foul. I mean, that's a, that's a really hard deal. So that's, you know, that's, that's why we went a little zone out last minute. There you have the post-game comments of East Carolina head coach Joe Dooley following the Pirates' 82-73 to victory over fifth-ranked Houston on Wednesday night. Absolutely, Coach Dooley. Uh, what a great game. Uh, this guy's, the sky's the limit for this team. Uh, how will they react? Uh, I know Memphis is uh, great, but uh, th- we've got the guys starting to, to gel again. Uh, pray to God. One thing that comes to mind, please no more COVID stoppages. Uh, that's one thing that uh, you always have to be concerned about. But uh, like Kyle said earlier in this show for overtime, uh, that we could do very well in February and set ourselves up nicely for the conference tournament. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, who was – was that Lindsay that asked uh, that asked Coach, uh, where does this rank? Uh, it may have been. I can't <laughs> to be honest. Um, we were trying to get everything ready uh, for the we show. Weren't, weren't you just listening? Weren't you just listening to the press call? I was listening to. He, he was talking about the different things. Yeah, I believe it was Lindsay. He said, "Uh, I, I, one of these days, and then I'm not knocking Mark Lindsay or whoever asked it, but uh, one of these days when, when a coach gets asked that, where does this win rank? I, I just wish they'd go fourth. He ranks fourth, <laughs> seventh overall." <laughs> I mean, just where does it rank? Seventh, yeah, seventh, exactly. yeah, seventh. That's the seventh. It's the seventh best. I mean, uh, you know, where does it rank as a head coach? Where does it rank in your coaching career? I mean, he was at Kansas. He was part of national championship teams. Yeah, yeah, he went and uh, did very well at Florida Gulf Coast uh, when he took yeah. back back into head I just, coaching. I just always, just, just, just that question always cracks me up. Hey, another good response would be, a, "It's the best one I got tonight." Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> a great one, Bubba. A great one, yeah. As someone that's coaching for you, you're exactly right. Right now, all you're thinking about is the fact that you got the, like I was telling Tristan and Newton, you got the monkey off your back because you've come so close this month and all the problems they've had, and they finally get the win. And the hey, win guess what good. the number two story on Sports Center is? Um, Somebody retiring? Justin Gorman, that's a bad possession. They wait. Oh, wow. Miles, mid-range, got it. And so, big bucket there. Carolina up six. ECU, five-point lead. Eight to go. Gardner inside. Oh, yeah. Soft like that. No up and down call. Just a floater. He had 21. Five this is courtesy of ESPN, by the way. Tristan Newton's got it. Copyright ESPN. Not sure what law of motion that is by Newton. Carolina, we're the Carolina. That's right. Don't forget that. We're the Carolina. As they continue to talk about it. Hey, that's that, that's what we want. And yeah, this program and and, you're in the uh, American. It, it was the second or third story on SportsCenter, guys. So, uh. That, that is uh, so awesome, and and it, usually that's, that's great stuff. Yeah, they're still talking really, about it right now. They're I'm just so about, uh, They're still talking about it. Well, it's, so it's not like a quick. No, mention. they're going on and on about Houston and their chances. You know, of you know how how this loss affects them, and uh, they have a 75 percent chance to win their last seven games, and. Well, that's the that's the thing, Houston. Uh, I think Houston's a you know they're talking about Houston's going to be on the two line or three line. I I mean, who knows what's going to happen this month? You know, I mean, there's still a ton of basketball, Bubba. You know, with the uh, with February, I mean, this is when the rubber meets the road, Kyle. I mean, you know that too. This is where uh, this month is it, kind of like with football with November. Uh, well, you know, like with us for for basketball now. February is when the rubber meets the road where now all of a sudden we can turn our season around as far as having a tough, a really tough January and not because of bad losses, Kyle, just for the fact of our health. 
Um, so uh, good stuff there. I, I'm just, uh, again, I, I've said a lot tonight, but I'm really, I'm really in shock. I, I still can't believe it. Yeah. Um, you know, we, uh, we're looking ahead to Memphis on Saturday and just take it on the road and play with that defense. Hey, Bubba, um, I know that, uh, by the way, uh, Kyle, are you guys ready to wrap things up? We've got uh, we've got some programming notes. Uh, don't forget, Saturday is at 2 o'clock, ESPN2, and that'll be a 1.30 uh, Learfield IMG College radio broadcast with our good friends Jeff Charles and Cy Seymour who I'm tickled to death that they've called so many games, uh, blowouts over the years they've had to call, and they got a, a nice one tonight uh, where the Pirates Did you, did you guys catch that, that, that that was Dooley's 200th career win? Yes. Yeah, very, very cool uh, for Coach. Oh, very good. Uh, very good time in there, Bubba. And no doubt. No doubt. That was, that's perfect. And uh, Coach gets a big win tonight. I know that he's probably more concentrating on – the fact that he won, uh, but 200 career wins is awesome, and and hopefully he can have many, many more here at East Carolina. We'd love to have him for a long, long, long time, uh, for sure. Uh, coming up, uh, by the way, folks, tomorrow night we got a big show, don't we, Bubba? Yeah, we do. On um, tomorrow night, and um, we'll be catching up with Devon, uh, better known as Biscuit Claybrook. Uh, defensive lineman for the Pirates in uh, the late 90s, early 2000s under Coach Steve Logan. Um, but Biscuit, uh, he also spent some time uh, coaching up in the CFL, was a head coach of BC. And uh, we'll, we'll catch up with Biscuit. And, and the main reason we want to have him on tomorrow night uh, is because Biscuit played on the, the only Tampa Bay team to ever win a Super Bowl back in, I think it was the 2002 season, the Super Bowl, of course, in late January, early February of uh, 2003 out in San Diego at what was then sure. Qualcomm Stadium, um, taking down, uh, I want to say it was for the o Oakland Raiders. Um, and Coach, right. Callahan, Coach Callahan with the Raiders, John Gruden beating his former organization. You, so we'll catch guys. up with Biscuit and get some perspective on what it's like with the Super Bowl festivities and all the preparation that goes into that two weeks. Do you guys remember why he's called Biscuit? Uh, I remember him telling us the story, but no, I, I do not recall. Yeah, I, I actually don't remember him telling the story. I remember this from um, Jeff Charles and um, uh, the dude used to call the TV games for us uh, that played um, – for Youngstown State. I can't think of his name right Cliff now. Stout. Cliff Stout, yeah. I remember them talking about it, and we're, we're going to have to confirm if this is correct. This is from my memory. His grandma used to make him a pan of biscuits every day when he got home from school, and uh, so he got the nickname Biscuit because he was always eating biscuits as a snack. That is right. Yeah, that, that certainly uh, – that, that's what my memory was, but I wasn't 100% on that. Yep. Yeah. We'll have him, and also we have uh, Mike Yam, right, Bubba, tomorrow night? Yeah, we caught up with Yams. Mike. All caught right. Up with, caught up with Mike Yam and uh, had some technical difficulties and during part of that interview, but uh, we, we still got about 15 minutes or so with Mike Yam. And then also tomorrow afternoon we resume our Jungle Tales after a, a hiatus of several days with our NCD1 baseball preview uh, going on um, but we'll catch up with butch davis uh, he played for the pirates 78 to 80 and then played for five different major league teams and uh, spent eight years i want to say in the big leagues so we'll hear from him tomorrow and uh, talk about uh, being a teammate of billy best and uh, and helping the pirates to an ncaa tournament in 1980 and, and we'll talk about guys. how his florida international program is doing yeah uh, i knew you were going to go there I knew at some point. And by the way, speaking of 23 Jungle Tales, brought to you by pgxgloves.com. And any day now, I'm so excited. I saw yesterday that I'm that it's shipped out for uh, the uh, the T-shirts. I got one for me and two for the kids. I actually got the – if you go to pgxgloves.com, you can see uh, they have on there under swag, they have the different T-shirts. And I got the one for the very segment that our good friend Mark Benikasi is sponsoring. And that is 23 Jungle Tales. So I got that one. The kids wanted as far as uh, Jungle Tales, is I'm sorry, as far as uh, PGX Gloves is concerned, they love the logo with the lion on it. So they, they got one each there. That's what they picked out. And uh, very excited to have part of 23 Jungle Tales. And uh, 
that's a really really cool. By the way, Bubba, they've got everything at PGX Gloves uh, that I saw. I mean, they've got custom gloves, baseball gloves, you know, batting gloves. What else, Bubba? Football gloves, golf gloves, swag, uh, like you mentioned with that sharp-looking logo you see on the screen there. They obviously have it in those colors, but he also has a pirate collection uh, where um, I, I need to uh, next show uh, tomorrow uh, we'll show the, the purple and gold version of that logo. Yep. And he has, he has it on a, a purple trucker's hat, um, um, R- Richardson brand, and also a black trucker's hat. Uh, um, and it's, it doesn't have the PGX gloves and it just has the, the lion logo with the baseball in its mouth. And then um, in, in addition to that, he also has other other apparel, um, be it T-shirts um, with 23 Jungle Tales and the Sports Objective, PGX gloves, et cetera. Hey, and most importantly, guys, just for being a listener to the Sports Objective, just for being a listener of the Sports Objective, you get to save 25%. That's right, save 25% off the checkout. When you go to pgxgloves.com and you put in code ECU, CCU in all caps, save 25%. You read my mind. I was getting ready to pitch you that call. You, you uh, handled that nicely. The solo tackle, uh, for sure. Nicely n- nicely done there. Very excited. By the way, folks, don't forget, uh, beginning of the show tomorrow night, we have uh, breaking news. We'll break that news tomorrow night on our Thursday night show. So can't wait to do that. When and news breaks, we fix it. That's right. We're going to fix it really well tomorrow night. Uh, to what will be done early on in the show and maybe later on. So we'll tell you about that and uh, looking forward to that. We'll have uh, overtime on Saturday afternoon and we'll do that for you and much more. So stay with us uh, for lots of great programming guys, huge victory tonight. Final thoughts before we go. Great win. Um, anytime you can do something like be the top five team in any sport is a huge deal. And in basketball much needed now they need to do something with it. Uh, I remember coach Logan used to talk about that. Uh, we beat somebody like Miami. Now, what are you going to do with it? Uh, it's nice as a standalone win, but uh, it means a lot more if you create momentum off of it and uh, win several more ball games sitting into March. And who knows what can happen when you get into tournament time if you're playing with a lot of confidence. It's always a good day to be a Pirate, but today is the best day to be a Pirate in an awfully long time. No doubt. This is, uh, to me, as big as uh, – <laughs> For pirate basketball, this is as big as means as as far as uh, winning some of those games in the nineties. Uh, maybe the Miami games of the world in ninety six and ninety nine. What I call the Floyd Bowl, uh, two of the biggest football wins. This is probably right up there, the biggest basketball win. So, very special day. Appreciate uh, Tony Parham coming on, and uh, obviously we had the comments from Jaden Gardner, Tristan Newton, and Coach Dooley for post game audio. Appreciate ECU for that, and. We're going to get out of here. So until next time, we'll see you tomorrow night. You've been watching and listening to Pirate Basketball Overtime. Pirates with a big win once again, 82. And they took down number five, Houston, 73, 82-73 tonight. And uh, it was a a lot of great fun. We'll see you next time. And as always, go Pirates. Put your crossbones up and